Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the lecture number 33 and module number 12 uh, and this is the last module and the first lecture of module 12 and overall it is lecture number 33. So, today's uh, topic is you know uh, meaning in life and well being. So, we will discuss about this concept in detail uh, before that just briefly uh, uh, let me uh, give summarize the last lecture that is lecture number 32. So, in the last lecture uh, we have discussed the concept of self determination theory and its connection to well being and motivation. So, in the last uh, few lecture we have started talking about specific eudynamic well being concepts, the concepts which are beyond just emotions, emotional well being and just you know. Uh, happiness and the concepts which are uh, more related to you know long term and future oriented uh, uh, goals and other concepts which are uh, related to also uh, uh, which are also very important concepts of well being. So, in the last lecture we talked about the concept of self determination theory which talks about which is basically a motivational theory and it tries to understand motivation and well being from the perspective of basic psychological needs. So, this theory says that there are three important basic psychological needs which are universal, these are need for competence, need for relatedness and need for autonomy. And these needs facilitates you know uh, motivation particularly the intrinsic kind of motivation and well being. When these needs are not fulfilled generally our well being is suffered and uh, we are not able to experience our life and function properly, uh, uh, properly or in the positive direction. So, this theory also specifically talked about you know two types of motivation that is intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Uh, intrinsic motivation basically means when we do an activity just because of the inherent you know satisfaction that we get from that uh, uh, activity. So, there is an inherent satisfaction and interest and enjoyment while doing a task. So, you do a task or an activity just for the sake of satisfaction and inherent joy that you get out of those activities. Uh, such kind of motivation are called as intrinsic motivation because the motivation comes from within you. You do not expect any separate outcome from outside. On the other hand extrinsic motivation basically talks about those kind of motivation or activities that we do uh, for to attain certain separable outcomes from the outside such as reward incentive, in incentive etc. Uh, so, we have also discussed that you know this uh, extrinsic motivation can be of different types. So, it is not just one category uh, and in that in that context we have discussed uh, different categories of extrinsic motivation such as you know uh, external regulation, uh, introjection, identification and integration. Identification and integration we have discussed are very close to intrinsic motivation because these are more internalized forms of extrinsic motivation and, uh, and uh, this internalized form of extrinsic motivation and other intrinsic motivation can be promoted or facilitated by using or by uh, facilitating or by you know uh, fulfilling uh, those basic psychological needs. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last class. and. Uh, Today we will talk about another important eudynamic concept which is called as meaning in life. So, meaning and purpose in life is another important concept which are which is very important for our well being and well being in our life. This is not just about you know 
emotional well-being but it is more about you know well-being which is more long term more stable and which gives you a kind of direction in your life so the key concepts that we'll discuss today uh, include what is the meaning in life three core dimensions of meaning in life uh, meaning in life and how it is connected to well-being and how can we discover meaning in life so these are some of the concepts that we'll address today so there are two important concepts that we need to understand which many time are used synonymously uh, one is called as meaning of life versus meaning in life so many time they are used very synonymously but technically these are two different terms when we talk about the concept of meaning of life uh, we are considering a metaphysical question a very philosophical question about why life and universe exist what is its purpose so these are questions that are uh, difficult to investigate scientifically because these are very metaphysical questions and we don't have any means to answer this question satisfactorily why this universe exist what is uh, the meaning of life overall and how they exist here these are very metaphysical and abstract concepts and uh, mostly uh, philosophers and metaphysicians theologian talk you know discusses these kind of questions so these are not uh, you know uh, psychologists are not directly interested into this kind of questions simply because they cannot be you know inquired using scientific methodology the second term which is uh, which we will be talking today uh, uh, we will discuss today is meaning in life meaning in life is more about subjective experiences of human uh, life and how people makes those subjective experiences as meaningful in their life how they evaluate their life how what experiences makes their life meaningful and when they experience meaning in life what is its outcome so these are some of the things that human being conceptualize or construct within their mind and we can study them just like other co psychological concept so psychologists are more interested into this concept of meaning in life how people construct this sense of meaning and coherence and cons uh, co you know comprehension of their life purpose in life and uh, what are its outcome so this is an this is an uh, important concepts which psychologists are interested in and we'll look into uh, the literature of this particular concept so what is meaning in life uh, just like happiness meaning in life uh, may have many connotations many uh, different people have different ideas about uh, what is meaning in life so let us see some of the definitions of meaning in life as proposed by some uh, important philosophers and psychologists so carl jung who is one of the greatest you know psychologist or uh, came from the psychodynamic tradition he said life exist only where there is a meaning so according to him you know existence of life is directly connected to the meaning no we cannot kind of you know uh, see or uh, existence of life ca cannot be separated from the meaning of life so they are highly connected concepts leo tolstoy said the sole meaning of life is to serve humanity so this is another kind of interpretation given by another person sole meaning of life is to serve humanity Viktor Frankl I will talk about his theory in detail today also he is one of the central figure in the meaning in life research he said for the meaning of life here he kind of used it synonymously with meaning in life differs from man to man from day to day and from hour to hour so meaning of life is kind of you know uh, is a, is a dynamic concept it changes from time to time person to person what matters therefore is not the meaning of life in general but rather the specific meaning a person's life at a given moment so he is saying uh, no meaning of life k is a dynamic concept and it can change from time to time uh, so what is important is any particular moment what meaning can be assigned to a person's life uh, that is more significant because it will influence that person so both psychologist and uh, philosophers uh, emphasize meaning in life as crucial dimensions of human life so if you see uh, the different literature you know in in philosophy as well as uh, you know in psychology 
Uh, everybody emphasize that meaning in life is very important concepts and probably it is one of the unique concept of human being that human beings are interested in the meaning in their life. What is the meaning in their life? How to make sense of their life? Uh, this is a part of evolution of our mind and we want to make sense of our life. So, meaning in life is very closely connected to a very maybe a very unique concepts of human life. Uh, many psychologists, uh, psychological scholars have uh, posited that all humans strive towards meaning in life in terms of need to understand the world, to know our place in it and to have purpose and goals. So, meaning in life uh, can be expressed in various ways. Uh, it may be in terms of need to understand the world, to know our place in it and to have purpose and goals. So, there may be different conceptualization, different ways of looking at it. We will see some more definitions also. Uh, philosophers such as Descartes and Camus have suggested that you know humans have fundamental motive to make sense of their experience. So, it is one of the fundamental motives many uh, philosophers and psychologists kind of propose that you know it is one of the fundamental motive within all human being to make sense of their life and their experiences of life. Uh, we all the time you know our mind is trying to make sense. That is basically how we, tr we find meaning in our life and experiences. Viktor Frankl uh, even proposed that seeking meaning is crucial not only to well-being, but also for survival. So, meaning in life, search for meaning in life is not just important for enhancing well-being, but it is also important even for our survival also. So, we will see how it is from the uh, Frankel's conceptualization and we will see that in more detail in the end of this lecture. So, Viktor Frankl uh, is commonly uh, cited in meaning in mean life research as one of the central figure and founding inspiration. Uh, he was a Holocaust survivor and you know he uh, kind of one of the first person who devoted his life in meaning in life research and you know and he evolved a therapy, psychotherapy called logotherapy, uh, which is aimed at you know uh, facilitating meaning in life in the persons or the clients. So, we will see more about that, but he is one of the central figure and who kind of is an inspiration for meaning in life research for all, all for all the other researchers. Frankel argued that people function best when they perceive a sense of meaning and possess a life purpose, a unique mission to strive for throughout their lives. And so, basically uh, for Frankel, Viktor Frankel, he said human functioning is also related to meaning in life. So, they function best when they have a sense of meaning and purpose in their life, they have certain mission in their life uh, that you know, facilitates functioning level also human beings. So, that is also a part of human well-being. So, he uh, developed a school of psychotherapy called logotherapy, which is aimed at helping people to find meaning in their life. So, we will talk about logotherapy in more detail. So, let us see some of the definitions of meaning in life, you know, there are, uh, there are many definitions uh, available in the literature. Uh, so, we will see some of these important definitions. So, despite uh, consensus uh, regarding uh, the importance of meaning in life, so everybody has a there is a consensus on the issue that you know meaning in life plays very important role in human existence and human lives. Uh, but definitions and operationalize how to measure it and all those kinds of there seem to be variations from researcher to researcher. Uh, so, some of these you know uh, uh, definitions so we will uh, look into some of these definitions. For example, uh, few researcher uh, defined meaning in life in terms of meaning is making sense of life they just define it. How do you make sense of your life is about meaning in life is about making sense of life. How do you understand life? How do you explain your life? Another definition, meaning is primarily nurtured by goal directed behavior. So, meaning is kind of equated with setting goal and reaching toward that goal that gives you a meaning in life. Another definition says a meaning is linked to transcendent or spiritual concern. Uh, some people see meaning in life is primarily you know uh, exploring uh, transcendent dimensions or the spiritual dimensions which are beyond this mundane materialistic life. Uh, true meaning of life according to those definitions are 
pursuit of those transcendent dimensions. Another definition says, meaning comes from a sense of self-worth, efficacy, self-justification and purpose. Meaning comes, me your life becomes more meaningful when you have a sense of self-worth or basically sense of healthy self-esteem. You feel efficacy or you are able to make an impact in whatever you are doing. You have a purpose, so all these things gives you a sense of meaning. So, these are different uh, definitions. By and large, most of this, this definition talks about few common things that are central to the idea of meaning in life. So, the central uh, themes are basically three core dimensions. So, if you see all these definitions, all these definitions are talking about three core important dimensions of meaning in life. So, meaning in life can have three important dimensions or meaning can be defined from three important perspective. One is uh, meaning in life is uh, looked from, looked as a coherence, coherence basically comprehension or understanding making sense of life. Meaning in life from the perspective of purpose in life, when you have a sense of purpose, you set goal and there is a direction and you try to reach those goals, that is meaning that gives you meaning in your, li in your life. And the third is significance. What is the significance of how do you uh, evaluate your life? Is it a significant life? Are you making some significant contribution or are you do you evaluate your life as significant? That will give you sense of meaning in life. So, these three, th these are three important dimensions of life. Let us see in more detail about these three dimensions. So, uh, if we, if we uh, see meaning in life, it has three dimensions. One is coherence, which is about making sense of life. Making life comprehensible. So, this is about, this is a descriptive and cognitive component. Component of meaning in life. So, one aspect or one dimension of meaning in life is coherence, which is about how do you make sense of, of your life. How do you describe your life? Uh, does it has a comprehensible? Is it comprehensible? Do you can see patterns and you know uh, patterns and there is a sense in what you are doing or what is happening around you? So this is more like how do you describe your life? And it is a basically cognitive component. It's more about descriptive aspect of uh, meaning in life. The second component or dimension of meaning in life is purpose. Purpose in life is mostly about setting goals and direction in your life, goals and direction in life. So, purpose is about what kind of goals you set in your life and uh, in what direction you are moving, are you able to achieve those goals and those kind of things. So, that gives you a sense of purpose that I have something to achieve in my life. This is mostly a motivational component of meaning in life. This is the motivational component. Motivational component basically means it motivates you to do set goals and achieve those goals. So, it, 
it it kinds of energizes you forces you to go in certain directions so that is why it is called as motivational component of meaning in life the third component of meaning in life is called as significance some people also call it as mattering does your life matter significance or mattering it is about a value and worthwhileness of one's life it is an evaluative component of meaning in life so significance or mattering is about how do you evaluate your life in terms of how worthy it is how valuable it is in in terms of your perception that makes whether it is a significant life or not according to your perception so basically it is an evaluative component how do you evaluate your life in terms of significance in terms of uh, how how much you know how does it matter uh, what is your what is its worthwhileness so these are the things that you look at it so meaning in life can be conceptualized in terms of coherence or making sense of life it could be uh, you know conceptualized in terms of purpose in life goals and reaching those goals and having a direction in life or meaning in life can be conceptualized as a value and worthwhileness of one's life the level of significance and how does it matter all these things so one is a descriptive component one is motivational component and one is evaluative component so let us see these three uh, dimensions in little bit more detail so coherence is meaning in life coherence the first component so life is coherent when one is able to understand patterns in it to make wholeness comprehensible so you are able to see patterns and overall make sense that how this all these patterns make a whole you know how the pieces combine into a whole so when you are make, able to make sense of all these thing then your life has a higher sense of coherence so this is the first component is about coherence it is about the feeling that one's experiences or life itself makes sense so you whenever you have this this feeling that okay my life has a pattern and there is a sense of comprehension and i am able to make sense of what is happening around me then the sense of coherence is very high so it is about making sense of one's life to make it comprehensible and coherent comprehensible coherence these are kind of similar terms so this is the cognitive component of meaning in life which is about basically descriptive aspect of uh, meaning in life it is about making sense of one's experiences in life so the, as, as we have already said this is descriptive and cognitive component of life some researcher made assumption that humans have an inherent need to make sense of their environment and have experienced dis and we experience distress in situations where meaning is disrupted Uh, stimulating our innate capacity to construct a meaning to become activated so many researchers uh, uh, and also it is a human nature also that we constantly try to make sense of our life moment to moment from time to time uh, that whatever happens whatever even happens in our life we want to make sense when something negative happens or something positive happens we try to make sense why it is happening we always ask question why why it is happening in my life or why it is happening to another's life so this why question we always try to answer uh, in order to make our life more coherent to make sense of our life so this is a basic tendency within all human being to increase this sense of coherence where and when we are not able to uh, you know experience this sense of coherence it will it will uh, increase distress and uh, you know negative emotions within us the next is purpose as meaning in life the next component 
uh, in many cases purpose has been used synonymously with meaning if you see literature in many in many contexts people use purpose in life as synonymous with meaning in life but we are trying to understand meaning in life in broader context where here we are conceptualizing purpose in life as one component of meaning in life and meaning in life may have other aspect beyond purpose in life however more specifically purpose is a dimension of meaning and refers to specifically to having direction and future oriented goal in life here when we talk about purpose in life we are basically talking about some future orientation setting goals and reaching those goals having direction in life these are the concept specifically connected with the idea of purpose in life as i have uh, we have already discussed about victor frankl some of the ideas victor frankl specifically used purpose to connote meaning in life he gave central importance to the sense of purpose as uh, as in order to define meaning in life some definition in this direction where meaning in life is kind of equated with purpose in life such as purpose in life is about having goals in life and sense of directedness so this is one way we can define purpose having goals and sense of direct there is a sense of direction that i am reaching going in some direction and reaching somewhere it is about a sense of core goals direction in life and enthusiasm regarding the future so it is a future oriented motivational component so despite some differences in the definition uh, researchers on purpose in life seems to agree that it is essentially about some future oriented aim and goals that give direction to life so basically it is about the future orientation and setting goals which gives you a direction in your life this overarching goals then lead, uh, lend significance to one's present actions so when you have a future goal your present action becomes significant because you are working towards that that goal and this is a motivational component of the meaning simply because it motivates you to go towards a goal or whatever target that you set the third component is significance or mattering as uh, we have seen significance has been understood to be about the worthwhileness or the value of one's life it is about how do you perceive your life is it a worthwhile life is it a valuable life what is your perception that keeps you whether your life has high sense of meaning or not high sense of significance or not some researcher use the term mattering for this aspect of meaning of life so significance and mattering are basically connot same idea so significance or mattering uh, is mostly defined as a value laden evaluation of one's life so it is mostly how do you evaluate your life is it a significant life so that is that it is a result of that evaluation life as a whole regarding how important worthwhile and inherently valuable it feels how do you feel your life so that evaluation will uh, kind of determine whether your life has high significance or not Uh, to experience mattering or significance is to feel that one's life has some profound and lasting importance so if you have that sense then you have a high sense of significance in your life that there is a some profound and lasting importance an individual with a low sense of mattering may feel that his or her existence carries little significance and that one's non-existent would make no impact on the world so people with low sense of significance or mattering generally they feel that their life is not significant at all and if they don't exist you know it will it will not matter so that is basically they are interpreting their life as a very meaningless existence so that is the idea of significance this aspect uh, receive less attention as compared to other dimension if you see the empirical literature on meaning in life uh this can also be uh, this this aspect particularly significance or mattering can be connected to bigger existential question whether life has inherent value in the larger scheme of things uh, it could be connected to some other philosophical concepts also it is also possible that many cases of depression and suicide may be connected to this sense low sense of mattering or significance it is possible that many people uh, experience sense of depression and suicidal ideation primarily because they evaluate their life as having low significance they don't feel that their life has any value and inherent significance to it 
so probably they feel you know, whether I exist or not, it will not matter. So they do not see any sense of worthwhileness or value in their life. So it is possible that many cases of depression and suicidal ideation could be connected to low sense of significance uh, and it may have negative consequences in terms of emotions. However, uh, research generally indicates on a positive note that most people do not go through life with the sense that their lives do not matter. Generally, people do not experience life, most of the people, uh, they do not experience that their life is having low significance. Generally, we consciously do not think about that my life is low in significance. Uh, neither do generally we continuously question our life whether it matters or not. So, it is not really you know part of most of the people's conscious thinking that whether my life is significant or it matters or not. It's primarily because we assume, most of us assume that you know our lives matter. Simply our existence and the people around us and our connections, the transactions, the things that we do, the activities that we do automatically gives you a sense that your life matters. It may not be you know very high in terms of that or low or it may be whatever in the intensity or in the in terms of you know uh, perception it may change uh, differ from person to person, but generally people consider their life that it is significant at least in a sense that I am doing lot of activities, I am connected with lot of people and uh, my life uh, plays very important role in the lives of many other people. So, all these things gives you automatically a sense of significance in, in your life. So, generally most of the people do not question that. So, that is a positive thing. So, most people assume their life matter. In fact, things and close people in our life, whatever things that we do and what we have and the people around us gives us a sense of specialness and uniqueness and permanence. This gives you a sense of this uh, significance of your life. At least you play a significant role in the life of many close people may be your parents, your friends, your family members, your communities. Uh, so, in a positive note, uh, generally most of the people do not assume their life as low matter or low significant. But for some people, it may be part of their conscious thinking too much and may lead to depression and other, other consequences. So, a sense of significance or mattering may be particularly adaptive during crisis or traumatic situation. Uh, this may, this particular component may play important role uh, during uh, any life crisis or traumatic situations, uh, primarily because many trauma literature indicates that people often do not consider traumatic event as pointless or without significance while coping with it. People often look for a sense of significance and positive value in the event in order to better cope with it. So, many people uh, you know, cope with the trauma, trauma or the crisis of life uh, by trying to make, make in one part can be making sense of it obviously is there and also uh, they see a sense of significance in it. What is the significance of this event in my life? So, that could be connected to making sense also, but sense of significance. Uh, when you are able to see significance or even you see some sense of uh, worthwhileness even in the traumatic or crisis of life, it helps you to become more resilient and come out of it. So, coping with trauma and uh, crisis in life, uh, this particular aspect if you have a high sense of significance in your life, it will help you to come out of it, cope with the crisis of your life in a much better way. At least trauma literature indicates that. Literature also suggests that maintaining a sense of mattering or significance or even positive illusions such as exaggerated sense of control, optimism, facilitate coping and mental health. So, maintaining a sense of significance that you know my life is worthwhile and valuable and even uh, you know certain positive illusions with a sense of control and optimism all this facilitate coping and helps people to adjust and adapt to traumatic and life crisis. So, separating coherence, purpose and significance. So, these are three important concepts, three important distinct dimensions of meaning in life and we have already discussed uh, uh, 
they are different in certain sense in terms of concepts or in terms of uh, how they are kind of you know uh, how they makes make life meaningful so let us see how conceptually they are different from each other so as we have already said coherence is mostly value neutral and descriptive component coherence has no value because you are not even here here you are not looking at life in terms of certain values you are just trying to make sense of life trying to describe your life or explain your life so it is more descriptive component where you are trying to understand what is happening how do you you know look at your life and experiences of life so it is value neutral and descriptive component whereas purpose and significance are generally evaluative and normative in purpose and significance generally you make some evaluations of your life and then you know it's certain out it is these are outcomes of certain evaluations that you do in terms of what kind of goal i should pursue in terms of you know uh whether my life is significant or not so certain evaluation aspect is there coherence is about describing the world as it appears to the individual how do you describe your world according to your subjective perception while significance and purpose uh, dimension aim to find values in the world in the present as well as the world that might arise from the pursuit of one's purpose so human efforts to find coherence is thus an attempt to create accurate mental models coherence is about creating mental models about our world in order to describe it uh, and it facilitates predictability and consistency it facilitates you know it makes your life more predictable and trying to make it more consistent human effort to find significance and purpose in turn is an attempt to find justification for one's actions and enduring foundation for self worth or to while pursuits and ways of living that extend into the future whereas significance and purpose are mostly about finding justifications for whatever actions that you are doing and uh, basically how do you evaluate your life and those things so conceptually there are certain differences about among these uh, three important dimensions of meaning in life however even though they are conceptually distinct con concepts uh, which overall gives sense of meaning in life there is a strong interrelationship between among them also so the dimensions of comprehension purpose and uh, mattering or significance are distinct as we have already seen but they are very closely related construct and overall they give you a sense of meaning in your life think but they are different but very closely connected related constructs how they are related the experience of comprehension purpose and mattering uh may mutually influence one another they can influence each other uh in a way that for example low level of one lead to the low levels in other and high level in one may lead to high level in others so all this actually influence each other for example you know low sense of comprehension dimension so if you have a low sense of coherence or comprehension you are not able to make sense of your life it will make difficult to experience a sense of direction and purpose without making sense of your life you cannot have a proper direction in your life so purpose of life will be influenced by coherence dimension and similarly this this will also influence uh the significance of your life or matter because if you don't have a sense of direction and understanding of your life you cannot experience your life as significant life so all can influence each other so low lower experience of one dimension may lead to lower experiences of other dimension and the vice versa now how meaning in life is connected to well being uh, victor frankl argued that humans are characterized by will to meaning and in a drive to find meaning and significance in their life and failure to achieve meaning in life results in psychological distress so uh, victor frankl says there is a sense of basic motivation of will to find meaning so there is always human beings trying to make sense of their life uh, find meaning in their life it is an innate drive and without that we will feel psychological distress and lack of well being research has generally supported this uh, relationship between lack of meaning and psychological distress for example having less meaning in one life has been associated with greater need for therapy depression and anxiety suicidal ideations and substance abuse so these are all indicators of lower well being so lack of well being is connected to with all this uh, 
lower aspects of well-being in terms of depression, anxiety, suicidal ideations and substance abuse. On the other hand, having a more meaning has been positively related to, if you have more meaning in life, you generally experience, people experience, they enjoy their work, they are more satisfied with their life, they experience more happiness and many other psychological uh, uh, indicators of functionings and other things. So, most of the literature generally uh, shows um, there is a positive relationship between meaning in life and indicators of well-being. Research also found that you know each dimensions of well-being uh, that is coherence or comprehension, purpose and significance, they separately also influence well-being uh, in their own ways. For example, you know comprehension or coherence dimension of well-being uh, may be related to better well-being through some of the mechanisms. For example, sense of comprehension minimizes uncertainty in your life. If you are able to make sense, obviously your life is more certain, there is a more pattern and more predictability in your life. So, uncertainty in life may be detrimental to well-being. So, if you feel your life is very uncertain, you, do, you are not able to make sense, where it is going, what am I doing, then obviously it is detrimental to your well-being. On the other hand, sense of comprehension actually reduces this uh, uncertainty and increases your well-being by you know um, by providing a better sense of understanding of a life on a day to do, do basis comprehension uh, dimension of meaning in life also gives you a greater sense of clarity in your life so reducing uncertainty is connected to having greater clarity also so, higher sense of comprehension may lead to greater clarity in making choices, decision making and smooth navigation in life. So, it uh, decreases uncertainty, increases clarity and it uh, also uh, you know, provides, promotes better ability to make sense and cope with life crisis. Crisis in life obviously, whenever you are able to make sense of crisis in life, it uh, helps you to um, deal with and cope with the traumas and crisis in life. Uh, the, if, you, if, if you do not know why something is happening in your life, it will be more distressing as compared to when you make sense. Okay, There is a sense and meaning why it is happening to me. Uh, automatically, you will come in terms with it and you are, will be able to come out of it. So, it may also help you to cope, help you to cope with the crisis and traumas of life. Purpose of life dimension uh, may be also connected to well-being in a very specific way. For example, uh, purpose in life also uh, may lead to greater day-to-day -day pursuit of valued goals. So, if you have higher purpose in life, it, it is basically also about you know you are making value valuable goals and you know trying to reach those goals, and reaching those goals increases your well-being. So, pursuit and commitment to valued goals associated with purpose can lead to higher well-being. Generally, we all understand, you know, if you have you know, valuable, meaningful goals and you are able to achieve those goals, going towards those goals, it will automatically give you a better sense of well-being. Uh, purpose in life also gives you greater positive emotions. How it is, how it can lead to greater positive emotion is primarily by identifying and making progress towards achieving those goals are associated with increase in positive emotions. When you know you have some valuable goals and you are achieving them, it increases your positive emotions. It also leads to greater concordance between pursued goals and core values. So, higher purpose is generally associated with pursuing goals that are congruent with inner core values and identity. People with higher purpose in life, they always choose goals which are congruent to your inner values and the values that which kinds of gives you a sense of identity and you know gives you meaning in your life. So, when you pursue those goals naturally, it increases uh, your sense of well-being. Such pursuit enhances well-being. The next is significance, how it is connected to significance dimension, how it is connected to well-being. Uh, mattering or significance may be related to well-being in following ways. One is it buffers death or existential anxiety. When you experience your life as meaningful, then uh, the death anxiety decreases. Uh, then you will not be really concerned with uh, death or existential anxiety, uh, especially because you will have higher self-esteem. And research shows people with lower self-esteem are more uh, afraid of death and those kind of you know, existential you know, anxieties. 
So, research indicates that higher self esteem or a sense of significance may diminish death or existential anxiety. Simply because when you have a higher sense of significance, your life is significant, valuable, you are not concerned with death and what happens after death. So, probably simply because your present life is significant, you are concerned with that only. Uh, you are not really, you know, uh, uh, experiencing too much of anxiety and, and about, you know, death and what will happen. So, greater equanimity, it also leads to greater equanimity and security in the face of threat and crisis. When you experience your, your life as significant, you have higher self-esteem, healthy self-esteem. So, that will give you a more stable and uh, greater equanimity in your life. You will not be too much overwhelmed by uh, the problems of your life. Uh, so, higher mattering may protect people from life crisis and threatening situation by providing resources such as higher self-esteem and optimism. This makes you uh, maintain equanimity and cope at the face of adversity. So, this, these are the ways by which significance or mattering may be related to well-being. So, each dimensions of meaning that is coherence, purpose and significance may be related to well-being in their own specific ways and overall meaning in life is also connected to higher well-being. So, uh, let us now address the last important issue that is where does meaning come from or how do you increase the sense of meaning in your life. So, one thing is that meaning in life can be increased by increasing sense of coherence or making sense of your life or making your life more purposeful or setting goals, valuable goals and reaching towards those goals or experiencing your life as significant. So, these three important dimensions gives you meaning in life. Obviously, broadly we have understood that. Now, let us see some of the more important specific aspects by which we can increase the meaning of life and particularly we will look at Viktor Frankl's theory. Uh, and how he talked about meaning in life and how can we use those concepts to enhance meaning of our life. So, discovering meaning and logotherapy. So, Viktor Frankl was an Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist and uh, he was a Holocaust Nazi Holocaust survivor. So, he was put into Nazi concentration camp. He and his family, his wife, his father, uh, his brother, all were arrested and put into Nazi concentration camp. And we all know the history of Nazi concentration camp, the kind of unbearable pain that uh, the inmates has to go through in the Nazi concentration camp. It is the most horrible human experiences we can expect or we can you know kind of imagine. So, he was put into one of those Nazi concentration camp and also changed from one concentration camp to other and his family members were also arrested. So, uh, from his experiences of all this uh, Nazi concentration came about his own experiences and uh, how he had to struggle and deal with the, all the unbearable sufferings of life and whatever he has witnessed in the life of other inmates. From those experiences of once when he came back or survived that concentration camp, when he came out of those concentration camp, he developed a therapy or a particular orientation. Uh, or theory in psychology which is called as logotherapy where you know his basic idea was to help people to find meaning in life because he could see how meaning in life plays such an important role in those concentration camps. So, this was an outcome of his experiences in those concentration camps. So, basic principle of logotherapy are that life has meaning under all circumstances even the most miserable ones. So, human life has meaning under all circumstances, even the most miserable one, you can find meaning in your life uh, even at any situation. So, this is one of the basic idea. Second is, our main motivation for living is our will to find meaning in life. Our human life, one of the basic motivation of human life is to find meaning in life, that is will to meaning. Third important principle is, humanity has the freedom of attitudinal choice, even in a situation of unchangeable afflictions. All human beings have a freedom of attitude, what kind of interpretation you do, what attitude you take towards a particular circumstances of your life, even the most unbearable circumstances. You have the freedom to choose for how to think about it, how to, what attitude should I take, what outlook should I take. This is the last human freedom, no one can take it away. 
outside you may be put into jail, put into all kinds of unbearable sufferings. But how do you look at this event? This is your last, you know, ultimate freedom that no one can take it, take it away from you. So, humanity has this freedom of attitudinal choice. How do you choose to interpret? How do you choose to look at the particular life situations? So, these are the important principles of logotherapy. So, according to Frankel, we can discover meaning in life in three different ways. Primarily, three different ways uh, we can implement to find meaning in our life. One is by creating a work or doing a deed. One is by involving into creative pursuits or creating something in life or doing some work. So, we can find meaning from do, doing some work as well as creating some work. For example, you know painting a picture or making music or any other achievement of task. So, meaning can be derived from work that we do or from the actions that we do in our life. It could be painting, it could be music, it could be achieving something from the task or doing something. So, from the work that we do. For Frankel, his passion for writing book on psychotherapy helped help him to give meaning and will to survive. So, in the concentration camp, he had this passion that he want to write his experiences and help people to develop a psychotherapy to find meaning. So, that that uh, that help that you know involvement or that passion give gave him meaning and help him to survive in those concentration camp. Second important ways we can kind of derive meaning is by experiencing something such as natural beauty. From certain experiences we can derive meaning such as some natural beauty or encountering someone such as loved ones or encounter with people around us, we can derive meaning in our life. It may include connection with spouse, family members, friends, God or sacred. Whenever you make connection with others, maybe spouse, family, friends or some sacred such as God and other thing, this all gives you a sense of meaning in your life. For Frankel, memories of his wife and connection to God help him to survive and find meaning in the concentration camp. Frankel was actually not aware that uh, within uh, few, one or two years, all his family members who were arrested and put into concentration camp all actually died. So, in the concentration camp, he always used to uh, you know, visualize and uh, you know, uh, and is to uh, visualize in his memories that once he come back, he will, he wants to uh, know, connect with his wife and family members. So, that gave him a sense of meaning and connection with the God also gave him a sense of meaning uh, that once he will come back, he needs to uh, know, uh, uh, know, connect with his family members and his wife. So, it, it helped him to survive there, give him meaning. Uh, unfortunately, all his family members actually died in the concentration camp, which he came uh, to know later. Third is by attitude we take towards unbearable sufferings. What kind of attitude you take is also connected to finding meaning. He said, we have the potential to make meaningful choices and attitudes even at the face of unbearable, unavoidable sufferings and adversity. Human being has this ultimate freedom of choice, what attitude you take towards a situation which is let us say you cannot change or it is, it could be like unbearable, unavoidable sufferings and adversities of life where you cannot really do anything out at the outside level. But still one thing that you can do is what attitude you take, what kind of interpretation you do. For example, in the concentration camp, Frankel observed that some people would give up and soon die. Many people inmates, they simply give up and used to die and commit suicide. Whereas, others, they kind of, you know, endured the, their suffering with courage and grace and primarily because they had some meaning in their life. They wanted to do something when they used to, they used to they, they, that is why they wanted to survive uh, because they had some meaning and sense of meaning in their life. Uh, those people actually survived. This is was his observation that you know sense of meaning helped them to survive even unbearable suffering such as Nazi concentration camp. So, in this direction, Frankel said, everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, this cannot be taken. What attitude you take? Even in the situation like Nazi concentration camp where people had no freedom, no 
unbearable suffering, extreme adversities. Uh, many inmates could make important choices and valuable choices and they could choose to look at those situations in certain way that give, give them, gave them meaning in life and could survive. Frankel believed that suffering is a part of life and life has meaning in all circumstances, even the most miserable one. Suffering is, is a is an, uh, kind of integral part of life and even in suffering we can find meaning in life and his own, own life is a testimony of that. And all these experiences he wrote in a book called, you know, Man's Search for Meaning. You can look into this book, it is a very beautiful book to read. He has summarized all his experiences and his concept in that book. And the book is called is Man's Search for Meaning. Man's Search for Meaning. It is available in Amazon and uh, other bookstores. So, he further argued that in all circumstances, individuals have the freedom to access that will to find meaning. So, if you have the right attitude, you can always find that, use that ultimate freedom of what attitude you take towards even unbearable uh, situations and you can find meaning and cope with it. This can be done by choosing attitude as we have already seen a freedom that no one can take away about that situation and find meaning. Our ultimate freedom is the ability to choose how to respond to any set of given circumstances, even the most painful ones. In this context, uh, Frankel said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. When we cannot change a situation because of whatever reason, then one thing that we can do is we can change ourselves, particularly our outlook and attitude towards those circumstances. If we do it in the proper directions, meaningful way, we can come out of it and make meaningful existence out of it. He also said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. So, if you see human beings, whenever there something happens in the external, that is a stimulus and we respond to the stimulus. Mostly, according, according to the nature of stimulus, our response is also in the same direction. So, mostly we are uh, kind of inter, uh, you know, reacting to stimulus in a very unconscious way, stimulus reaction, stimulus reaction. Frankel said there is a space between that, we are mostly not using that space and in that space is our freedom, how to choose to think about it. If you can use those, that space between stimulus and response, in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and freedom. Your choice, how do you respond as stimulus will determine your growth and outcome of your life. So, it is more very similar to the idea of ABC theory that we have talked about in coping, you know, mental ways of coping, where between an event and consequences, there is a B element, which is belief. How do you think about those event determines what will be the consequences. So, he is talking very similar thing. In that space between stimulus and response is our freedom and freedom to choose. How do you think about it? And that will determine your growth and whatever freedom and experiences of life. Additionally, uh, he, uh, Frankel also said people can also find meaning in their life by identifying the unique roles that they need to fulfill. Many times by our unique roles that we need to perform in our life also gives you sense of meaning. Frankel also believed that search for meaning even amidst suffering can constitute potential sol solution to human suffering. He said, in some way suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds meaning such as the meaning of a sacrifice. So, generally our suffering becomes less suffering or at least it is not, it, it may become no longer suffering when we find meaning in those suffering, why I am suffering it. If you find meaning in those suffering, your suffering will cease to become suffering. For example, many times we sacrifice our life and suffer, but when we see it as a sacrifice, our suffering reduces or vanishes. In that context, one example uh, is very popular with Frankel. For example, a man came to Frankel for therapy and he consulted Frankel due to severe depression following the death of his wife. So, he is an old man and after his death he was having severe depression and he came to Frankel and help uh, sought his uh, support and, uh, you know, uh, and therapy. Frankel asked him to consider what would have happened if he had died first and his wife had to had been forced to mourn his death. So, he just asked this simple question. No? Just imagine if you had died first, 
then all this suffering your wife hmm, will have to bear all this suffering instead of that you are kind of taking that role and sacrificing yourself and you know kind of you know your wife is spared from those suffering simply because she died before you frankel helped this elderly man to see that his purpose had been to spare his wife the pain of losing him first the man was able to recognize that his own suffering spared his wife from having that experience this helped relieved his depression so he just walked out of the his chamber and uh, simply probably his whole depression was banished just to, just when he looked at this particular perspective to see his unique role in that particular relationship so frankel noted that meaning in life differ from person to person and from situation to situation it is not a fixed thing it changes from in your own life also the meaning can change from time to time moment to moment uh, hence he asserts that there is not a general meaning in life for all humanity but rather an idiosyncratic meaning that varies at any given moment so we cannot talk about a general meaning that everybody has to pursue it is about individual life and it may also change within that person's life from moment to moment so at the present moment what is that you know you need to make sense what is the meaning of your life that is very important so these are uh, some of the ideas about meaning in life and uh, the next lecture will be the last lecture of the module 12 and that is the last lecture of this course also so with this i will end today's lecture thank you